collaborations with a team, the Advanced Visualization Laboratory at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. And this team is like a Renaissance team. It's, it's composed of artists, uh, musicians, computational scientists, technologists, and we bring together these visualizations. So every moving image that you see today has been done by that team. Now, emergence is about properties that mer emerge from very simple units that come together in very complex systems. And a cell or a corporation is a self-sustaining system that has come up from being made up of simple units where properties such as what a corporation does or what a cell does emerges from those simple units as an interaction. So I'm going to take you into a very familiar emergent self-sustaining system out of a thunderstorm. Out of a thunderstorm, one emergent small-scale feature is, in fact, a tornado. So you have the huge anvil clouds. You have a system that is being fed by the atmosphere, by moisture. But what comes out of that is a very short-lived entity, a tornado that emerges out of nothing except that very complicated system around it. It has wind. Here you see a visualization of an anatomy of a tornado, the wind that's feeding it. But it did emerge as a property from a much larger system. And this computational visifor, visual metaphor driven by scientific data is showing its beginning and will eventually come to its end. But it is a great example of an emergent property that becomes self-sustaining. Now I want to take you in this idea of emergence through a, a tour of our universe, all with data-driven, computational, artistically rendered visualizations. We're going to start out about 32 million years after the Big Bang and take you up to present day as, t as galaxies are forming in the early universe, coming together with gas, creating stars within the galaxies, being brought together by gravity. And you see them forming on these tendrils, these filaments in the universe. This is computation that took many months to compute this projection of the scale of our universe. But we confirm these computations but the, with the telescopes where we take pictures, bring them back to us as information, and then we create these visualiz visualizations from the science in a projection of the great history and scale. This visualization is roughly one million light years to one billion light years across. So let's go down a level. So let's get a little closer to those galaxies. Now, the point I'm making here is the universe is a really, really, really big place. And it's made up of these emergent properties, these nested, alive, interacting, interconnected systems. Here we come down one more level into 16 million years uh, after the Big Bang until the present day, where galaxies are forming. There's collisions, gravity is pulling this gas together when it collides, stars are being born, and what we are having here is the birth of the environment where our entire Earth was formed out of one of these independent systems. So let's go down another level. You saw those proto-galaxies. But what about our well-formed, beautiful galaxies that we look up and through Hubble telescopes see today? This is a colliding set of colliding, two independent galaxies that are coming together, being pulled together in, in intergalactic space through gravity. Two billion years are passing here in one minute. 
we have crunched down time and space through these visual metaphors. We see these two entities emerge. They co-emerge. They essentially become one. But we see this pattern again and again throughout the universe, even up until present day. And then we have our own Milky Way. We are an, residing on a planet that resides in our own home Milky Way galaxy. Our, we circle around a sun, one of hundreds of millions of suns in our Milky Way. That's one galaxy is a cluster of hundreds of millions of suns like our own. But we're just one galaxy among tens of thousands of galaxies. And that's just our near group. We have our nearest sister galaxy, Andromeda. But there are many, many millions of miles. To take these virtual tours that you see here today, you would have to go faster, faster than the speed of light. But how did our own Earth form? Well, inside one of these large galaxies, our Milky Way, at some point in the history of the galaxy itself, a star was born, a star that we call our sun. And it formed in a big cloud, a molecular cloud. And that cloud resides inside of the galaxy. And inside the molecular cloud is a very small scale feature called a protoplanetary disk. There's many protoplanetary disks inside molecular clouds inside the galaxy. And they are forming, and they are forming around stars. And this particular visualization is data-driven, computationally computed, showing a star with a disk forming clumps. These clumps will eventually form a planet, planets around the sun, much like our own solar system. And again, the scale we keep going down to is our own planet which is its own system independent in the solar system, which is its own independent, nested, emergent property of the universe. And then you get down to the Earth itself. What a complex environment Earth is. We, human beings, are certainly a system that has emerged. We're like viruses on the planet. And, but there's these very complex interactions of our atmosphere, humidity transport. This is a whole different time scale. It took approximately six, uh, what was it, six billion years to form our planet. And from that, I'm just taking a snapshot of humidity transport for 12 days, which is its own system that we as human beings depend upon. We have emerged from it, but it is independent in the processes that go on that are large scale on this planet. And from those atmospheres and humidity that we see, we also can see smaller scale features such as our own tornado that we started with on this journey, which has taken us from really the huge scale down through these many nested scales of phenomenon, even to what we experience today. And this birth and death of this tornado and the satellite tornado, which we discovered in the visualization process, they come, they emerge, they dissipate, and they go, much like our own lives on this planet. So when we think of how long it took to get where we are today, it's been a very short period of time since we have started developing and emerging these other systems, such as 
transportation, communication, all of the technologies, and we affect our own planet. It is being measured that we, as one of these systems, have an effect on the planet, its temperature, its carbon dioxide. And the visifors that I'm showing you today are, in fact, emergent properties that come about through the technology, through the art, through the science, through our society, through our politics. These are all very interconnected, independent, nested systems from huge galaxies down to the Earth, to our emergent bodies, minds, our politics, our technologies, our visifors themselves, and it spans a long period of time. We participate in these nested systems, and our home planet is where we participate the most. So what I can say today is as we go about our creating, constructing, making, studying, and building to make sure that we co-emerge responsibly with our planet. Thank you. Thank you.